Hey everyone, this is Richard Rost. Just wanted to take a moment to let everyone know that I've finally released part three of the core of the ABCD, the Access Business and Contact Database. This is what's included. In lesson one, we're going to begin working with miscellaneous data. This is all that stuff that you might want to save about some of your customers, but not all of them, like shoe size, nickname, favorite baseball team. You want to put these in individual fields so maybe you can do some reporting or some sorting or something on it, and you want to store this in something other than just a notes field, but it's not something you want to put in the entity table. You might not have it for everybody, okay? but you want your people to be able to type in this information. So we'll make a list of types, shoe size, nickname, favorite baseball team, and so on. The data table to hold that in, we'll throw this in a subform in our entity form like the rest of those guys. We'll put on the bottom the date it was entered and the date it was updated. So every time they make a change, you'll also be able to see where that information was updated. That's good to know because you can also use this for questionnaires. right? If you're sending out questionnaires for people, you might want to know when it was entered or last updated. So that's all in lesson one. In lesson two, we're continuing to work with the miscellaneous data table. If any of these items are set as for everyone, those are the default items that everyone gets, we're going to lock them so you can't change it and you can't delete it. Then we'll use some conditional formatting to mark those ones as gray. So again, it's indicated that you can't change those. When we go to a new entity, if they don't have those records yet, we'll add them automatically. So for example, right here, everyone will get shoe size and Starfleet rank automatically added to their account when you go to their miscellaneous tab the very first time. I finally get to use a record set to do that. Then we'll be able to specify certain items, like baseball team here, for example, can be picked from the helper data table. So we'll make a list of baseball teams in there. So we'll join those two things together. You pick favorite baseball team, then a combo box appears down at the bottom where you can pick your baseball team and then the text goes up top for you automatically. In lesson three, we're finishing up miscellaneous data. We're going to make a force from list option. So if you say that the user has to pick from the drop down list for this particular question, they have to pick from the list. They can't just type in what they want. So for example, college majors, they've got to pick from a list of college majors. Then we'll make the miscellaneous type editor form where we've got our, our list that goes in the miscellaneous types. Here you can see, for example, shoe size, nickname, and whatever. Favorite baseball team, you have to pick from a list of baseball teams. Where does that list come from? The helper table, of course. All right, then they can specify whether you have to force an option from the list and whether this is for everyone or not, which we did in the last lesson, so it automatically puts those in for new people. Lots, lots to do in this lesson. In lesson four, we're going to be doing some housekeeping. We're going to make an admin menu, put those buttons like helper data and relation types and stuff on the admin menu. We're going to set up a password that you need to open the admin menu. We're going to put proper user logon and security in this database when it's done. It's easier to do at the end. But for now, we'll just make a single admin password. That'll be, it'll be stored in your code, so it'll be secure. But you'll have to type that in to open the admin menu. Once the admin menu is open, you'll be treated as an administrator, so just leave that menu open. Um, we'll put the open form right code in here, which makes a form open to the right, and even with another form, it makes it just look cleaner. Um, we'll make the helper lists system values. The helper lists themselves like groups and such need to also be system values so they can't be changed or edited by a non-admin. We'll set up simple admin security like I talked about. We'll set up an is admin function so that we can very easily see if, you know, in our code, if the person using the database is an administrator. Then we'll do something where the admin users can change those system values the helper list items and the helper value items, but you'll get a prompt. If you are an admin, it'll say, this is a system value. Are you sure you want to change it? So you'll be allowed to do it, even though you probably shouldn't. So that's in lesson four. In lesson five, we're going to work on the group edit button. So on our group list, we'll make an edit button that only appears if you're an administrator, since we have an admin form now. If you're not an admin, that won't show up there. Click on that and it will open up the helper data editor, which is where the group information is, put you right into groups and let you edit that list. Close that form. When it goes back to the group list, it'll update that list for you. Then we're going to work on an address block or an address copy block. What that is, you can see down here in the bottom right corner, 
this is an address block that's put together based on all these fields. And if these guys are blank, it'll grab the first name and company name off the entity form. If you leave these buttons here, auto checked. So it'll grab those. If not, if you don't want that, turn these off and it won't copy that. It'll leave that blank because for example, for your home address, you might not want your company name to auto fill in and you might not want your personal name to auto fill in for address E1. That's what I put these here for. So you can change those. And the purpose of this is until we get the address writer going, or in general, if you want to use Microsoft Word to write a letter, all you have to do is click once on that and it will copy this block to your clipboard. So then you can go over to Word or Excel or whatever you're using and paste that right in. That's an address block. And I'll show you how to copy stuff to the clipboard. All right, lesson six has a lot of crazy stuff in it. Some more housekeeping. Um, we're going to force the email tab to be the first tab that's displayed, just in case you leave it on a different tab and you come back to that form, it may stick with a different tab there. So we want to force that to always be the first one, the email tab. We're going to show the current age next to both date of birth and date created. Date created is like your customer sense. So, you know, this guy's been a customer for two months, for example, and you can see that I'm 48. Um, this way, if you're going to call the customer, you get a general idea of how old they are. And that could be handy on a sales call. I'll give you my how long function that it took me hours to write to my code vault. We'll put it in this database. We'll make the first email address, phone number, or address that's added for each person set the primary automatically. Right now, you got to click it. Well, we'll do it so if they if you enter one and there isn't a primary, it makes the first one primary. Then we'll make a switch tabs function because there's a lot going on now when we switch from tab to tab. We're changing colors. We're changing what forms underneath there. I'm going to do some stuff with the focus to jump the focus to a new record on the bottom there. So you can just click on the email tab and then start typing. And then we'll turn the flash off with focus because as this as things are redrawing on the screen, you're going to notice a little bit of flashing. So we'll turn that off with the echo command. Lots to do in lesson six. It's a long lesson. In lesson seven, we're going to build form slide outs. That means we're going to start the form small. And then, for example, the entity form, when someone clicks on one of those tabs, the email phone address tabs, or the little button on the bottom, it'll expand the form and then show the subform. Then we're going to do the same thing on the entity list form because we're preparing for a section on that form where we're going to have the advanced searching stuff in the next lesson. If you'd like more information on the ABCD, just visit my website. There's a link. I'll put it down in the description below the video too.